morning all. Um, ladies and gentlemen, can I please remind you to ensure mobile phones and other devices are on silent, that banners, etc., are not permitted and members of the public are not allowed to address the meeting, to use the microphones which are available when addressing the meeting and that you may be filmed or recorded during this meeting. Thank you. Um, please be upstanding for your chairman. <coughs> Morning, everyone. Would you please remain standing while Canon Maliki Brett leads us in prayer? A guy woke up and considering the, the day ahead, he jumped out of bed to do what he needed to do. And he realized that at the end of his day, he had achieved very little or nothing. The following morning, uh, before getting out of bed, he prayed, Lord, what are we going to do today? And the day was very fulfilling. So as we begin uh, this council meeting today, let's bow our heads and pray and remember all the good work that has been achieved by this council. We pray for all who have served on this council in the past, for those who are continuing to serve and for those who are new. We pray for the grace that we will serve with honesty, with goodness, and with humility, so that the grace of wisdom will help us to strive for all that is best and all that is good. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. It is going to be the hottest day of the year, I believe. So with my permission, you may take your jackets and ties off. For those of you that already haven't. The first item on the agenda is to suspend full council procedure rule 21. As this is our first council meeting back in this chamber since February 2019, which is possible following the COVID restrictions being relaxed on Monday. I am conscious this may be an anxious time for many as we get used to the relaxation of rules. I ask that members do wear masks, if possible, in the chamber, except when speaking. But I also ask members to be considerate of those who are able to or choose not to do so. The windows have been opened here today to enable good ventilation in the room. In addition, the sound from this meeting is also broadcast into the assembly hall next door. So if you're feeling uncomfortable at any point, you are able to move into the assembly hall and hear the debate. Please remember though, that you will need to come back into the chamber to speak or to cast your vote. I will pause for a moment or a few moments before each vote to enable members to come back into the room. In light of these arrangements, I move that the council suspends full council procedure rule 21, which is that absences of more than 10 minutes will be recorded in the minutes of the meeting. Do I have a seconder? I form a second, that chairman. Thank you, vice chairman. I put the motion to the vote. Anybody? Is all in favor? Anyone against? No, that's carried then, thank you. The first item of the formal agenda is minutes, and I ask that the council approve the minutes of the last meeting with an amendment to page one. I think we've all noticed the deliberate mistake and that uh, Councillor Mike Pringle was promoted to the position of chairman of the council and awarded an MBE. So, <laughs> <laughs> With this uh, amendment, are we all content that the, we approve the minutes? All in favour? That's clearly carried then. Apologies for absence. 
Councillor Barnfather, do you have any apologies? Yes, uh, thank, thank you, Chairman. I have uh, apologies from Councillor Boyd Elliott and Councillor Matt Barney, both medical illness, and from Councillor Dr John Doddy, other reasons. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Henshaw. Thank you, Councillor Quigley. Yes, I have some apologies. Councillor John Clark, caring for a clinically highly vulnerable family member. Councillor Sybil Fielding, living with a clinically highly vulnerable family member. Councillor Glyn Guilfoyle, caring for a clinically highly vulnerable family member. And Councillor Errol Henry, who has very serious medical family reasons. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Henshaw. Councillor Deakin. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to say that all our group are present. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Deakin. And we have an apology from, for absence from Councillor Steve Carr for other reasons. Agenda item three, declarations of interest. If any councillor or officer has either a disclosable pecuniary interest or a private interest in any matter on the agenda, you should declare it now. Please raise your hand now if you have an interest to declare. When called to speak, you should state whether it is a disclosable pecuniary interest or a private interest and give brief details. Any member needs to make a declaration? Councillor Shaw. Thank you, Chair. Just a private interest uh, in the uh, miners' uh, motion. Thank you. Being an ex-miner. Thank you. No one else? No. Chairman, may I, may I say something? Yeah. Chair. Oops, Chairman, sorry. May I ask, uh, uh, there are a number of ex-miners. Do we all have to declare an interest? We could just seek clarification, please. That, I, I bear to the monitoring officer, but to me, I, it's a personal matter whether you wish to declare it or not. As you know, if you're in receipt of a miner's pension, then you probably would need to declare it. If I may, Chairman, and good morning, colleagues. Yes, please, if you are in receipt of a miner's pension and therefore affected by that motion, the report on the uh, remuneration for councillors, uh, we don't need you to declare uh, an interest in that one because it affects you all equally. So with that in mind, do those who are in receipt of a miners' pension wish to declare a, an interest before we move on? No, that's it then. Are there any officers who need to declare an interest in the agenda? No. no. Move on to agenda item four then, which is chairman's business. And I have agreed that councillor Tracy Tr Taylor can update members on the shadow event. Councillor Taylor. Thank you, chairman. Good morning, members. It's a privilege for me to be able to invite you to this year's shadow event held at Sherwood Forest. This will be the council's 47th year of delivering shadow, which is an annual all night orienteering event for young people from across Nottinghamshire. And it's organized by the Knots Outdoors and Youth Service. Shadow has been a key feature of the Young People's Service annual program of events, engaging thousands of young people and hundreds of adult volunteers over its long and proud history of delivery. The event provides an opportunity for small groups of young people to learn navigation, basic first aid, and the skills and patience needed to work together as a team. There are various incidents out in the forest to find and take part in. For instance, activities such as assault courses, circus skills, and performing songs at the dead of night. Each team of young people has six hours to navigate around the sectors, completing as many incidents as they can, earning extra points for the additional tasks that they successfully complete. In 2019, around 300 young people took part in Shadow. And last year, due to the pandemic, it was decided that we would continue to deliver the event, but at our young people's centres, so that social distancing guidelines could be applied and alternative activities could be undertaken. Youth workers were given an activity pack and instructions on how to complete the activities. They submitted their group's scores and evidence back to the outdoor team for verification. 
We had a fantastic response with 35 youth service teams and over 200 young people completing various activities. And I just want to pause and reprise there. 2019, 300 young people in a normal service year. And our engagement was sufficient last year that 200 young people still engaged with those activities in a different form during the pandemic. Due to its success, as well as returning back to the main shadow event at Sherwood Forest, we'll continue to run the alternative event in the summer term for the younger people aged 10 to 13 in our youth centres as an introduction for them to the larger overnight event. It does give me great pleasure to reintroduce the main shadow event this year and to extend my invitation to you all to visit, to meet young people, our volunteers and our staff. The event will start on the evening of Saturday the 9th of October and the youth service will be arranging a members visit between 9pm and 10.30pm to Sherwood Forest. For more information about the event and how you can attend, we have arranged a presentation which will be shown throughout lunchtime with members of the team available to answer any of your questions. And my understanding, Chairman, is that that will be uh, set up outside in the assembly hall through the lunch period. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. And I'm sure some of us will want to take up the opportunity to see that presentation during the lunch break. As uh, the, the AGM was uh, uh, quite new in my year of uh, office, I hadn't had the opportunity to uh, mention to you and advise my chosen charity. I think you've probably all seen the information in, in the comms releases, but I did and I have chosen uh, When You Wish Upon a Star. And uh, I was going to have a flyer on everybody's uh, table today, but with the upsurge in uh, COVID uh, in the area, I thought it probably wasn't a good idea to have superfluous bits of paper on everybody's seat. Uh, so I would like you all to consider during the following few months, while we've got some decent weather, to have a small tea party in your garden at home and raise some money for when you wish upon a star. It's been badly hit during the pandemic. And uh, I know of at least 10 children in Nottinghamshire who are waiting anxiously to, for, for a treat. Um, maybe they may not be able to go to Disney World in Florida or, or France, but I'm sure the charity will arrange something for, for them to, to do it and create some memories for them and their families uh, in, in what are trying times for young children with life-threatening illnesses. So I would, <clears throat> if we can all uh, think about a small event, doesn't need to be many people, even 10 people in your garden and at £10 a time for a, an afternoon tea, um, we'd soon raise the £5,000 I've set myself as a, as a target for this year and hopefully we, we, we break it. So uh, with your support, I'm sure we will. So thank you for that. <clears throat> it's been an interesting start to, uh, to my year um, and certainly more interesting than the previous chairman who unfortunately was locked down with, uh, with the COVID restrictions. So I have attended a few events. Uh, on the 8th of, uh, of June, we uh, went to Newark to uh, the installation of the new Archdeacon for Newark. And on the 13th, we were at, or I was at Southall. We, Wendy couldn't accompany me because of uh, restrictions of numbers uh, for the Queen's birthday service uh, with the Lord Lieutenant. On the 21st, we had the fly the flag at Nottinghamshire County Council. And on the 25th, I was fortunate enough to be invited to Ashfield to their fly the flag ceremony, which was uh, well attended as well. On the 8th of July, I made a short film, which I hopefully you all saw about Srebrenica and the massacre of the 8,000 people in that town. Uh, we must not forget that despite the uh, Holocaust and things that happened in the Second World War, we are still seeing genocide happen in this modern day and I think we should all uh, be thankful that we live in the country that we do live in. And on the 11th we had civic service unfortunately due to restrictions again uh, in the Minster uh, there, there were only about 50 people allowed to attend but uh, it was an enjoyable event and we met obviously met quite a few members of the uh, civic uh, team in the, in the county. 
and I've had various meetings with the civic team and the minister and comms to, uh, to sort out all those issues. Uh, unfortunately, this year, Kreitch was cancelled again. So we didn't get the opportunity to go to Kreitch, which I was personally uh, upset about because I've always wanted to go on that, on that particular uh, event. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do it. So that uh, concludes my update on chairman's business. Um, lunch break. We intend to have about an hour lunch break at approximately 12.30. Uh, and uh, all, those of you that have ordered a meal, I look forward to seeing you in the Rupert Suite. And uh, hopefully we, we have an enjoyable lunch. Moving on then to agenda item five, constituency issues. This is to give members who have previously given notice by the deadline of 10 a.m. three working days before the meeting. It provides an opportunity for members to speak up to three minutes on any particular matter relevant to their constituencies or any particular issues arising in their electoral division, which is relevant to the services provided by the County Council. This is an opportunity to simply air these issues in the meeting. It will not give rise to a debate on the issue or a question or answer session. Remembers, members are reminded that there is a maximum time limit of 15 minutes for this item on the agenda, and each member may only speak for a maximum of three minutes. There were originally eight speeches, but Councillor Michelle Welsh has withdrawn hers, so we are now uh, on seven. So if I can call upon Councillor Philip Owen. Yes, sir. thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to draw to members' attention a particular issue that is now uh, causing increasing problems in my division of Nuttall and Kimberley and have been asked by residents and indeed by the police uh, to raise it formally. And that is, that is issues regarding the road known as the A610. The A610 is one of two major roads that run through the borough of Broxtow away from the city. The A610 is a dual carriageway and since it was built has always been a road that has caused problems in terms of accidents. And now what we have is really a, a pandemic almost, certainly an epidemic because it's not worldwide, it's just confined to the A610 of speeding. Now I know that's not a unique problem, but on such a dangerous road as the A610, it is an increasing problem and there are an increasing number of accidents. Over the years, the department, the highways department has made significant modifications. The speed limit has been reduced. Lighting was put in. A central crash barrier has been put in, but all really to no avail. And now we have problem compounded by the fact that the uh, car cruising meets are taking place uh, in localities close to the A610 and it is being used as a means of getting to that uh, those car meets, those car cruising meets and causing uh, further problems, particularly noise issues to residents. The simple call is for uh, average speed cameras to be put along the stretch of the A610 that runs through certainly my Nuttall and Kimberley division. People in Broxtow see the other main road, the A52, which has average speed cameras and say, why can't we? Well, I know, I know, you know that the A52 is a trunk road and that there is a difference. 30 seconds, councillor. Thank you. But to ordinary members of the public, they do not appreciate the differences and are calling, along with the police, for the installation of average speed cameras. Thank you for giving me the opportunity, Chairman. Thank you, councillor Owen. Councillor Andy Meakin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would, I would this morning like to address the serious issue of child poverty in Kirby, where I represent. As a single father living on one of the most impoverished estates in Nottinghamshire, 
I, I stare poverty in the face on a daily basis. As a, as a school governor at Morven Park Primary School, I speak with struggling parents all the time. It is the fact that nearly half of all families on the Coxmoor Estate, Kingsway Estate, the South Lane area claim free school meals. This has risen dramatically during the su successive COVID lockdowns where unemployment has gone through the roof. Fuel poverty is also an issue. In winter months, residents face a cruel choice, feed your kids or eat the house. Almost 400,000 UK householders will be pushed into fuel poverty this winter as energy fuels climb by almost 10% as a result of rising gas market prices. At least 3 million homes in the UK are already thought to be unable to afford their energy bills, and the number in the fuel poverty grow, could grow by 392,000 within the coming months. Fuel poverty campaigners have won for, for every 1% point rise of their annual energy bill, an additional 440,000 homes may fall into a fuel poverty category. The warning comes as the energy experts raise concern that the average dual fuel bill could jump by an average of £112 a year from October if the energy regulator's price cap is reset at its highest level after record gas market prices. Simon Francis, the coordinator of the Fuel Poverty Coalition, said a second energy bill act this year would be disastrous for the millions on the brink of fuel poverty. Francis added that many still reeling from the increase in bills caused by stay-at-home lockdown measures for the last 18 months. Millions, millions of UK own face winter energy bill acts of over £110 a year, experts say. If it wasn't bad enough, fuel poverty can make respiratory illness worse, meaning conditions such as COVID may be exasperated by living in the cold, damp homes. A standard gas electric bill is expected to climb in an average of £1,250 a year this winter after dramatic surge in global energy markets, which has forced gas prices across Europe to record highs. This will be a massive impact on thousands of residents, especially in places like, like Kirby and its poorer states. What I'm calling for, Mr Chairman, is for the council... 30 seconds, Councillor. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Chairman. It's for the council to target resources ap appropriately. Buzzwords of, at the moment, including levelling up the country. We have a major problem with levelling up the country. I welcome the fact that my daughter's school, Asheville Comprehensive, will be built, rebuilt alongside Kirby College. This improvements are long overdue, but Mr Chairman, New buildings won't solve the cycle of deprivation across Kirby Nashfield. I am committed, Mr. Chairman, to ensure that I use my term to ensure we level up the communities like Kirby. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councillor John Wilmot. Thank you, Chairman. Um, firstly, uh, our Hucknall Library was built in 1887 and has served Hucknall for close on 125 years. It's a major part of our community. Whilst it's true to say that the library usage has declined uh, due to the internet and the availability of books from websites like Amazon, it is still important to members of the Hucknall community. I first visited Hucknall Library when I was a child, and I've been there regular ever since. As a major library in the land of poet Lord Byron, I welcome the fact that our beloved library has reopened now after major refurbishment. Ashfield District Council processed £33,173 worth of government grants during the pandemic for the library and £12,920 for the library at Edgewood. Our councils paid out £1 million in government grants to inspire. Whether that money should have come out of the £19.3 million sat in covered reserves is another question. Hucknall Library sits right in the middle of Hucknall Town Centre on South Street. As I said earlier, it's just been repaired and that I welcome. I do feel, however, this is a missed opportunity to deal with the poor public health, the poor public toilet facilities in Hucknall Town Centre. Many libraries offer the use of their toilets to the public even after the refurnishment of Hucknall Library. No improvements were made to ensure the toilet was accessible and available to Hucknall residents. Like many of the libraries in our bigger towns, Hucknall Library is open more than most. I look forward to, being, to for it to be open on Wednesdays as staffing issues are resolved. I know this has been raised by my colleagues at this week's Communities Committee. Councillor da uh, Daniel Williamson spoke about the need to create community hubs in our, uh, in our libraries. This is what I would like to see in libraries like Hucknall. We've already suggested to both Nottinghamshire Police and Inspire that our library should be used as a weekly police drop in centres, in the centre, and I hope the talks I have instigated will lead to this. Independent councillors met with the police on Sunday 
at the library and they would welcome any additional community engagement places like our libraries. I would also like to see more shared usage to inspire adults, adult learning to deal with social mobility issues in Hucknall and provide services that our unemployed have, the tr have to travel to Ball at the present time to access since the closure of our job centre in Hucknall. The cultural programme at Hucknall is poor and there is a feeling in the community that library services are provided in Hucknall because it's a statutory, statutory, statutory duty. These are just a few ideas, Mr Chairman, that we will guarantee the future of the libraries like Hucknall for decades to come. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Wilmot. Councillor Hollis. Thank you, Chairman. And I bring to, like in the first meeting of this new council, I'd like to bring something to the attention of all members that's happened in my division, because in the last meeting I spoke about the erection of the 5G mass that was erected with no planning permission and a lack of consultation by either the landowners um, um, the, and with the council and members of the public was non-existent. Now I rise to speak about the Nottinghamshire County Council's rollout of children's facilities across Nottinghamshire. Um, I've had one of these facilities uh, purchased and is currently going through our planning procedure uh, on 32 Sudbury Drive. I found out about this property only when a formal offer had been put in and the formal application to ourselves as a planning authority, which in itself is difficult to understand. Members will be aware that as the upper tier authority, this council has the right to pull in any planning application it wishes from the districts and boroughs. Um, it, of course, does not do that because that put a great burden on this authority, but it has done that in the instance of 32 Sudbury Drive, because we now own that property. My frustration is, and to be exactly clear, me and the rest of the Ashfield Independent Group fully support the purchase of these properties across Nottinghamshire, and bearing in mind well over 90 out of every, every 100 children come from Ashfield and Mansfield. It's heavily affected by our group and, and the Mansfield members, which of course the leader of the council is one. What I don't support is not using our local knowledge as members to not only get the best facilities for the said children, but also value for money. And thirdly, finding a facility that is in keeping with the members of the community that we also have a responsibility for. My division, the average property price is around £90,000. Sutton in Ashfield is £100,000. The County Council has just purchased the property for £300,000 on the most expensive street in my division for, two, for just two children. Two streets away, they could have had three. One, one street away, frankly, they could have had two, and it's just as equally lovely street with all the same reasons. But because we didn't have this consultation, we've now got a house that's... Uh, three miles away from the town centre, uh, a 20 minute walk um, from the 25 minute brisk walk from the town centre, but also not on any bus route, not close to any facilities, um, and it's not going to be great for those children seconds, either. Councillor. So, my plea to the leadership of this council is please do use local knowledge and do consult with residents before it's too late, because this issue con con constrains. Everything from children's services under Colin Pettigrew to uh, Adrian Smith, who had the ultimate sign off on this under the leadership of the uh, committee chair. We need to do better. Uh, and we want to be part of a, a council that works together to find these facilities. And we need a number more in Ashfield. And time, I Councillor Hollis. You'd consult more with the local member. Thank you. Councillor Gerardi. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. It's a very brief moan I have about um, work that I've seen happening in my division um, that I think I ought to bring to the attention of the Chamber. And it's mostly about the work that the utility company's done, which has been debated at great length here. In fact, I think Councillor Saddington took it through a scrutiny committee some years ago about um, trying to get utility companies to work more hand in glove with the county council so that when we did work they didn't come up a couple of months later and then uh, dig up the road or something such and i just i had in my mind a memory of this heineken advert um, and i've just googled it and it was 1982 so i can't probably remember it at all because i'm obviously far too young mr chairman for that um but uh where, where it was a bit of a play where people were they were digging a hole and then someone comes and said, can we lay a cable at the same time? And then they tried to bury a body at the same time. But it was a much 
uh, some levity about joined up working. And it's clear to me that that's not happening still. This is perhaps a challenge for Councillor Clark to review once he's got the, the first bit of work out of the way, that uh, the work we do do is then drastically undone and never repaired to the same level by utility companies who come back and have a very cavalier <laughs> attitude to their reparation works. At the junction of Sutton Road and Copeland Road, which adjoins Councillor Meakin's division, uh, this council spent some £3,000 last year planting bulbs on the verge, the grass verges of the junction. And um, six weeks ago, utility companies dug our verges up and all of the bulbs and everything else and left it with no grass, no bulbs, no mud. Uh, I mean, it's nothing. It's, a, it's an entire mess. Um, and I, I think the gap, Mr Chairman, is that it's not effectively highway it's not footpath it's not it's not roads and we may well have we may well have highlighted that in the past but there are other public estate that are adjacent to the highway where utilities companies are clearly not liaising with the county council properly now it's clearly a mess uh, i've had the district council try and repair some of it but we can't we can't and won't be able to replant it and i'm not suggesting the county council should either what i think is uh, mr chairman that we just need to shine a light on this a little bit so that work that happens from utility companies in future means reparation to any damage they do for good work the county council's done and, not, seconds, and not just uh, where they've damaged roads and pavements uh, so i hope that the appropriate committee chairs can look at that and try and put some robust working action with those companies thank you mr chairman Can I advise members, there's only about a minute left. There are two people who have submitted constituency issues. I am prepared to let them voice those, but I would ask them to be brief because basically we're running over time and it's uh, not normal that we do this. But uh, as there is a minute left and therefore Councillor Williamson has the right to start, I will let her finish and uh, as there's only one left, I think it's only equitable that we uh, allow that last uh, constituency matter to go ahead. So, Councillor Williamson. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Can I say how good it is to be attending my first full council meeting as a Nottinghamshire County Councillor for Brinsley, Greasley and Watnall? Unfortunately, I was unable to attend the last council meeting as I was in hospital. One of the biggest complaints I received, Mr Chairman, is about road safety. Many roads in places like Brinsley, Greasley and Watnall are used as a racetrack. I would like to concentrate on road safety issues in Brinsley and More Green at this meeting. Reuben Shores is a popular garden centre and coffee house on the main road of More Green. More Green is in with, within walking distance of More Green Reservoir, Collierswood and Bowbell Priory. More Green has a speed limit of 30 miles an hour, yet you wouldn't know it. The road is akin to Monte Carlo, at times with speeding that would leave Lewis Hamilton in his tracks. The speeding completely destroys the tranquility of this rural area and puts lives in danger. We have issues with speeding on other roads in Brinsley. Broad Lane, Church Lane, Crawley Lane and Mansfield Road are all a nightmare and an accident waiting to happen. I note that on Monday the Environment and Transport Committee pledged to reduce road casualties by another 40%. But this must be matched, Mr Chairman by a commitment to work with Nottinghamshire Police on a better and more effective enforcement of speed limits. Let's face it, we don't have enough police to enforce speed restrictions. In Eastwood, you can't even walk into our police station and speak to a human being about speeding or other concerns. There is also the issue of this council having a reactive rather than a proactive approach to road safety. This was raised on Monday by my colleague, Councillor Wilmot. How many times have we heard the word statistics thrown at us when calling for enhanced road safety issues? How many times have we heard the line, well, councillor, there have been no deaths, no injuries or no near misses? Councillor Neil Clark tells us that spending money on road safety is a balancing act, that we must look, that we must look at the balance sheet to make decisions on road safety. I don't feel that this is the right way to go about it. I've requested mobile speed cameras on roads I've mentioned with some success. The issue I have is that the police issue a weekly list publicly stating the locations of these cameras and the times of their operation. These lists are then shared on social media hundreds of times as a warning for drivers to slow down. This is a stick and plaster approach to road safety as once the mobile 30 seconds. speed cameras move on, 
our roads become a racetrack again. Thank you for allowing me to speak on concerns raised on a daily basis in my new role as County Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williamson. Councillor Henshaw, could I ask that you be brief Always. and not take up all your three minutes? <laughs> Thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Quigley. Uh, yeah, I rise uh, not to make a complaint or a, a moan. I rise to uh, inform the Council of a, a, a project in, in my division that uh, is worthy of being celebrated. Um, this, this community group does a first-class job in, our, in my community. The Peace of Mind Allotment Project, situated on Harrop White Road in the heart of the Ladybrook Estate, provide horticultural and gardening therapy sessions for people who have mild to moderate mental health conditions. And in fact, this council recognises that mental health uh, problem is a problem that's growing. And this is outlined in our mental health and well-being policy. And there is growing evidence that gardening can benefit our mental health. An important consideration at this time, when the NHS is stretched and one in four adults are experiencing mental illness. A report in the Mental Health Journal cited, gardening has been able to reduce stress and improve mood with a reduction in symptoms of depression and, and anxiety. This group has been in operation for nearly eight years and during that time they have grown and expanded. I want to pay comment to Doug and his wife Carol and the other helpers who work there tirelessly. This allotment is a place of calm and tranquility and has helped many people to overcome everyday stresses and worries. And I can vouch that the fruit and vegetables they produce are also very good. A study by the researchers at University of Wessex and Essex has found that even a small amount of participation in allotment gardening can have significant benefits to health. Gardens are special peaceful spaces with restorative qualities that can work wonders when they are when someone is stressed and under pressure. The work of the Peace of Mind group has become even more important due to the effects of the coronavirus epidemic. I know the people who go to the group sessions are benefiting from attending and their mental health is improving because it is such a supportive and caring environment. I wish them well for the future and in all their endeavours. 30 seconds counts for Henshaw. And they can be confident of my continued support. Thank you. Thank you for not using all your three minutes. <laughs> just. <laughs> Only just, though. <laughs> Agenda item 6A, presentation of petitions. I was notified of three petitions by the deadline. May I remind members there is one minute time limit for the presentation of each petition, and there is a maximum time of 15 minutes for this item. <clears throat> Councillor Maureen Dobson. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, everybody, and well done. That was brilliant because you're absolutely right. Can I suggest you invite the chairman down to that allotment and uh, let the, him see for himself? <laughs> chairman, um, I present a very large petition, tw over 1,200 signatures, uh, from two very small communities, but a lot of community support to save a primary school in North Clifton. South Clifton and North Clifton, for those of you who don't know, it, on the borders with Lincolnshire. Very small community, but a community that works hard to retain everything that it's tried to keep, like village halls, like sports centres, etc., of which I and the previous county councillor both supported for a long time. I just think you should know it's a primary school that actually has... Five uh, seconds, Councillor Dobson. Sorry? Five seconds. Okay, oh, that has actually... Well, <laughs> 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 Your time is up. One point off, Chairman. Well, no. uh, <laughs> Thank you. 
Councillor Bruce Lawton. Thank you very much. This is a petition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is a petition from the residents of Little Carlton. There aren't 1,200 in it, I can assure you. Uh, there's only about 150, but they're, they're wanting a bridleway on the A616. While I'm on my feet, they also would like to thank the council for the uh, implementation of 40 mile an hour speed limits, which came live on July the 19th, which is already having a significant impact in this community on speeding. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Lawton. <laughs> Councillor Richard Butler. Uh, oh. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Well, I have a petition that's only been, I say only, been signed by a dozen people, but it's still very important and valid. It's from residents of Althorpe Road, Cotgrave, who are uh, speaking about a problem about a uh, parking problem outside out, um, <coughs> Ashley School. Uh, this is not the usual drop off and pick up time problems that most schools have, but it literally lasts all day. They accept that buses and parents have to be able to drop off and collect their children, and they know that many have special needs. The problem is that a lot of cars are parked on Althorpe Road all day and they are staff or other people uh, connected with the school. They park outside the road from our homes and therefore make it difficult for us to get our cars and caravans in and out of our drives. We think there is a lot of surplus land. Five within... seconds, Councillor. Thank you. Sorry. They think there's a lot of surplus land within the grounds oh, and can they park oh, there? Thank you very much. What? <laughs> I'll continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can I ask Council to resolve that the petitions be referred to the appropriate committees for consideration and a report will be brought back to Council in due course in accordance with standing orders? All in favour? Responses 6B for responses to petitions presented at the previous meeting. I move that the contents of the report and the actions approved be noted. Is that agreed? agreed. Agenda item number seven, management accounts for 2021. And I call upon Councillor Richard Jackson, who will introduce the report and move the recommendations in the report. Uh, thank you, Chairman. And a pleasure in presenting to full council today the management accounts for the 2020 to 21 financial year. Uh, this report has been compiled against a backdrop of the continuing COVID-19 emergency. Throughout the year, all local authorities have been required to submit forecast uh, COVID-19 financial impact information to the Ministry for Housing and Local Government. The year-end submission from Nottinghamshire identified a total gross financial impact of £82.9 million for the financial year. These costs, however, have been offset by a number of COVID-19 grants that have been received from central government. Despite the pandemic, the financial position of the County Council has continued to be monitored in the usual way and reported monthly to the corporate leadership team and to the Finance Committee. I can report that there, were, uh, there was an underspend of 21.2 million against committee budgets in the financial year, 16.1 million of which related to the Adult Social Care and Public Health Committee. The main reasons for the underspends were reduced costs associated with long-term nursing care, as well as many of the COVID-19 related costs being funded by specific government grants and contributions from health. Taking into account the variances against the central items, such as interest payments, capital charges and government grants, the total county council underspend for the financial year was 10.8 million. The Council meeting in February of this year approved the use of £600,000 of general fund balances. Given the event that it during the financial year, the Council's funding position... Could I ask the member whose phone is just rung to put £5 in the charity account before he leaves the chamber? There's £10. That's £10. <laughs> You'll get to your £5,000 yet, Chairman. <laughs> Um, where was I? So, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, sorry about that, <laughs> Councillor Jackson. Take no, it's made you ten pounds, Chairman. Thoughts. It's all for a good cause. <laughs> so, so, given <laughs> given the events, <laughs> given the events that emerged we'll during the financial the year, the accounts with this. Uh, our funding position has been impacted by a range of temporary funding provided to assist the council's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. This includes four tranches of core COVID-19 grant totaling 47.1 million 
which was not factored clearly into the budget projections when setting the budget for the uh, previous financial year. As a consequence, it's proposed that the Council's general fund balance has increased by 10.2 million to 32.1 million pounds to help fund the significant continuing financial challenges facing the Council over the medium term. Despite the difficulties faced by the Council, £104 million of expenditure was invested in the capital programme during 2020-2021. Majority of this money was related to school improvement projects uh, and to provide an additional school places as well as uh, investing in uh, improving the condition of the county's highways infrastructure. Uh, uh, drawing to a close, Mr Chairman, I'd like to draw attention to the appendices to the report, which give further details of the outturn, the level of council reserves and the allocations that have been made during the year from the contingency budgets. Uh, Appendix D and Appendix E provide an update for two key areas of local authority financial governance. Uh, D sets out the financial uh, position against the uh, uh, prudential indicators that were approved as part of the budget report to council in February of 2020. Appendix E uh, provides a review of the council's treasury management activities. The Council's pre-audited Statement of Accounts was published on the website on the 9th of July and will be presented to a future Government and Ethics Committee uh, on completion of the annual external audit, which is currently underway. So, Mr Chairman, I'll move the recommendations. I'm happy to answer any questions from members, either now, uh, verbally or in writing at a late date. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. I call upon Councillor Roger Jackson to second the motion. Yeah, I formally second the motion, Chairman. Do you reserve your right to speak? I've got last statement. Yeah. Are you reserving your right to speak? I'm reserved my right to speak. Thank you. Councillor Hollis. Thank you, Chair. We're still getting used to the Vice Chairman having so many roles on the Council, haven't we? Between these folks from the Fire Authority, Vice Chairman of the Council and Vice Chairman of a big committee. Well, I suppose he's going to be used to being busy now. But, um, well, no, I think we don't need to repeat all the comments that I, as um, the Finance Spokesman for National Independence, because uh, obviously a number of those were voiced at the committee itself. But I think just to bring to the attention of all members, I mean, we, we won't be supporting this today um, simply because of a number of reasons which I'll set out, which Councillor Jackson will be aware that I set out uh, in the finance meeting. But if we draw members' attention firstly to uh, page two, uh, sorry, page 10 of the report, which is the table one, we have an, un an underspend of... £21 million pounds that sat in our bank account that frankly could have been redistributed to the businesses and people that need it now. And let's not forget that this, this council received that many grants, it had to send back one and a half million back to the government because we couldn't spend it fast enough. And I'll tell you something, Ashfield Council, all the money we received, that was straight out the door. We were one of the first councils to do that, and I think it's absolutely unacceptable that this council sent any money back to the government, but particularly the one and a half million pound that we did. And then the disparity and the lack of uh, insight into the council tax. Uh, members of the previous council will be aware that we raised the council tax by the maximum for the adult social care. Yet in the budget, you'll note that all of the ex extra we, we put in, entire, entirety of what we charged, is still sat in our banks. So when we, and that, and that information you will note is, well, lost the page now. It's in there anyway, it's in there. Um, obviously it's there, isn't it, on, the, um, on page 11 of the report, oh, a 16.1 million pound underspend. So we didn't need to raise the adult social care precept exactly as the Ashfield Independence Group said before the council. You've got to appreciate that Nottinghamshire is one of the most deprived counties uh, in the country and Ashfield is one of the most deprived districts in the country and certainly sits um, in a very tough place. You know, you're talking about the shift workers that are currently having a tough time during the pandemic, um, not being able to go to work on an hourly rate. They aren't fortunate enough to be salaried it's a tough time, yet we asked them for money when we didn't need it. And I think, I hope when we come down to the next um, council tax budget setting, that we will look at ourselves and think, do we really need that money? Particularly bearing in mind a number of motions that we put down at the last uh, meeting, simply to save my short start centre in Huthwaite would have cost 30,000 pounds. We asked for it to be took out of the contingency, yet we see a massive 
underspend in the contingency budget. There's differences we could have made, and I think they just get highlighted more and more when we see the, the interim reports. One comment I do have a concern of is, and I think it, in, in fairness it is well, well done in the report, is the last bullet point on the children and young peoples. The 0.6 underspend is, and obviously this is one of the topic of my um, constituency speech also, um, that figure scares me. We, we had 6.4 million pounds extra in, yet we only underspent by 0.6. There's massive problems in the children's and young people's budget, and I hope the chairman and vice chairman of that committee will, will have full attention, and Councillor Jackson and I spoke about this in the last Finance and Property Committee, and it's something that our committee will be uh, gladly assist with. And that goes down to how do we make sure we save as much money as possible uh, with contracts like with these new properties we're buying. We need to make sure we get good value for money because simply we aren't able now to have this magic money tree. I don't suspect the government's going to write us that much money as a get out of jail free card next time. The children and young people's budgets in a very, very scary place. And we all know where this council was only a number of years ago, slightly before I got on the council. Um, and of course, the chief executive oversaw, oversaw that at the time. It was a very, very tough place, and we don't want to see. We don't want to go back to there. And, it, and if we can't have the money available, we will do. So, a few, a few comments on that. And I suspect the Asheville Independent Group will be minded to in, uh, abstain today rather than vote against. Uh, however. We do have a number of concerns, particularly with the children and young peoples. And my only other plea was, please get that money out of the door. We've been given COVID grants by the government. Don't let them sit in Nottinghamshire County Council's budget. And for God's sake, don't send any more money back to the government. Can we increase councillors' divisional funds? Can we increase community pots? You know, anything we can do to get that money shifted and into the businesses and the communities where it needs to be uh, would be welcomed by us. And uh, I'll end my comments there, Chairman, but thank you. Councillor Creamer. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, we do have similar, similar concerns, but this is a, a history document. And our actual problem is with the, uh, the future estimates of capital. We are, we are going to support it. We're, again, with the uh, independents, we're, uh, we're not happy about taking the money out of social services, etc. But that is done, and we will be objecting every time it happens. If it happens again, we're hoping it won't. But to uh, go to uh, Appendix D, the very mention is on about the estimate of capital expenditure. It is an estimate, and there's very little in there about any the building programme. And are we? And there's a, I think there's a motion later on even about it. Are we actually going to suspend at least some of our programme while we actually look at the finances of what's required with the new ways of working with COVID? Uh, we do realise that the money needs to get out as quickly as possible, as quite rightly said. But at the same time, we need to get it out correctly. We need to get it out without having to drag it back. So, yes, I would actually ask to improve on the speed of getting it out. But at the same, t at the same time, I know it's a difficult position because Gedling is in a very difficult position and does it very effectively. And I'm sure Ashfield does it very effectively with their funds as well. But we have to make sure it goes to the correct people at the correct time and not have to drag it back. So, yes, we, we are going to support it. We're going to go into far more detail of projects coming up, where the money's going to go. But the estimate of capital expenditure seems very light, to be honest, because of the changes of COVID. So we want, to, we want to actually see something in there about projects that will be either brought down, brought up, because of various issues within social health, within the children's budget, etc. So yes, we will, be, we will be supporting it, but we do have concerns. And we will be raising those concerns within the meetings and within the full council meetings at the reports. So thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Creamer. <laughs> Nobody else has indicated. Oh, Councillor Dobson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, page nine or page 41, um, the school places a capital programme, uh, school building improvement pro uh, programme. And it says it's proposed that the children's and young people's capital programme is varied to reflect the recent confirmed, I would think Tracy is saying, whoopee, extra 9.5 million from the DFE grant. 
Could I ask, and it's possibly on the agenda uh, for the next meeting or a future one, um, I'd like to know how quickly we're going to spend this, because it's got to be spent in 21-22. What schools, a lot of our rural schools, I have to say, it sounds as though I'm being a bit uh, parochial. I'm not, because I represent New York Town, part of New York Town, but a lot of our rural schools are in dire need of some assistance, Chairman. And so I would like to hope that the, the committee is going to actually come up with a programme of what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and how quickly it's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Anyone else? No? Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Roger Jackson, uh, you reserve your right to speak. Do you wish to speak? No, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, then. I call upon Councillor Richard Jackson to uh, <coughs> deliver their right of reply. Uh, yep, yeah, thank you, Chairman. I'll just try and pick up on a few of those points. If I just start, Maureen, uh, with your questions, I can't, off the top of my head, recall the detail, but there is a detailed plan for that um, expenditure on schools. I'm sure it can, if Tracy hasn't got it, then we can get an officer to get it to you as soon as possible. Yeah, I'll certainly do that for you. Um, as far as Councillor Creamer goes, Jim, as you know, a couple of the programmes under constant review. Um, there are clearly going to be changes to the needs of the Council's office estate. Uh, and we're working hard to uh, really get to grips with exactly what that is, and that falls under Councillor Girling's uh, remit, and he's working on it. Uh, and we'll, we'll bring that out to Council uh, as soon as it's finalised. Um, as far as the Ashfield independence uh, questions, I thought they were Nottinghamshire independence now, Chairman, but they, they, they can change their minds as often as their socks if they want to. Um, Firstly, on the grant money that was sent back to central government, this was money that was given to upper tier authorities specifically to take on temporary uh, social care staff at a time when there was a massive pressure nationally on social care staff and, and there were very few actually available. It uh, couldn't be used for anything else uh, and, and it was practically impossible to take on extra staff at that time. That money had to go back. They don't like sending any money back to central government, but there was little choice in, in that regard at that time. Um, um, I think, um, as Hollis said, there was nothing unspent at Ashfield. There's £161,044.50 unspent in your discretionary grant balances as a starter unspent. So you want to go back to offices and make sure that gets put out to uh, the businesses in, in Ashfield that will be asking for it. But the cash, the, the, the additional COVID grants, the additional COVID Can grants... Can I ask you to be quiet, Councillor Jodhi? Nobody, nobody interrupted you when you were speaking, please? been accused of lying in the chamber, uh, Chairman, which I take offence at. Will you withdraw that remark? Fantastic. OK. Well, the, the monitoring office has taken a note of it. If you so continue Council's with this it. behaviour, Councillor, I shall ask that you remove yourself from the chamber. So please behave for the rest of the meeting. Be, uh, behave. We're about to move to the vote. Uh, or, uh, have you finished, Councillor Jackson? Uh, I was uh, more or less. I had finished, Chairman. Uh, what I was going to uh, again stress is why we have a COVID reserve. Government are well aware of how much uh, they've given us in extra funding to support us through COVID, and they're well aware of what we've spent on it. They are well aware of the difference between those two figures, and that that 19 million pounds, which is in a COVID reserve, is that is explicitly what it says on the tin. It's to be spent on future COVID pressures. If we give it out now, if we spend it now, if we rush to spend it uh, because certain members think we ought to, it won't be there if and when uh, there are uh, significant additional costs to us in the future. And government are not going to give us back something which we've gone and spent quickly. That money will be spent on COVID-related pressures, Mr Chairman, but it can only be spent once and it would be completely, completely irresponsible to spend it now. Uh, just for the sake of being seen to spend it. So I wouldn't countenance that. Uh, I, I just urge all members to support this uh, yeah. this paper. Uh, apart from anything else, it shows the excellent work that's been done by the finance team throughout the year and throughout what an extraordinary year. Uh, a lot of pressures on the finance team. We've picked up a lot of additional duties to do with the COVID pandemic, uh, but nevertheless have got the day job done at the same time and delivered uh, the accounts as they set out in front of it, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. We're about to move to the vote, so could I ask and remind members who are not in the chamber that uh, they need Port to get of order, Port of Order 96, Mr Chairman. Um, this orderly conduct by Councillor Jackson. Um, I would just like to supply him with the 
although although in his rambling he he somehow got round with the fact he had said like one and a half million and then disguised it with a lie that Ashfield Council hasn't spent its money when he fully well knows they have. So I would gladly supply him with the relevant information, which I know he probably has already. But point of order 96 is disorderly to mislead the chamber. Thank you. Right. Is every, I think everyone that's left the chamber is now back in. So can we move to the vote then? All those in favour? It's clearly carried. Anyone against? Any abstentions? <laughs> the vote is carried. Agenda item eight, members allowances scheme, report of the independent remuneration panel. And I call upon councillor Chris Barnfather to move the recommendations in the report. Yeah, thank you, uh, chairman. As most members will be aware, when a new administration is formed, uh, we convene a meeting of the independent remuneration panel to look at allowances which are primarily paid to members. Uh, that panel's role is outlined in the report that they themselves produce in the uh, pages 63 to 117 of our bundles. Uh, primarily, it's to look at the cost envelope, the total cost envelope of special responsibility allowances, how the administration is seek to um, allocate uh, those resources and to look to benchmark um, their allocation of resources against other similar authorities. There is a slight difficulty for the panel in that we are one of the very few authorities that operate under a committee system rather than a leader and cabinet system. So that is a, a, a difficulty which uh, was indeed articulated by the panel. Uh, the panel actually uh, contacted all members and invited submissions from them and then met formally on the 18th and the 24th of June and invited each group to send representatives to effectively make their case or articulate their own representations. I met with the panel myself as I am aware that uh, members of the other uh, political groups within this chamber did and I believe some of the non-aligned members as well. Um, it was quite a grueling uh, experience, may I say. It was a bit like being back in the dock, uh, not the dock, perhaps the witness box. I should correct that one. <laughs> the, uh, although some people should have been the other way around. But it was a bit like being back in the witness box as a police officer. And I think I had about an hour and 10 minutes of, uh, of, of uh, significant questioning. It, it is uh, the point that I'm making here uh, in a rambling fashion, Chairman, is that the IRP take their role extremely seriously. It is not a rubber stamp of any recommendations made by the administration. Indeed, we made our own uh, representations and recommendations, uh, particularly in light of uh, a special, special responsibility allowance for the deputy leader of the main opposition group, which we felt uh, was, was wrongly positioned. Uh, and and uh, the deputy leader of that group has uh, since received a small increase in his allowance. Um, the, uh, we recognised that there were some um, anomalies with the deputy leader and the business manager of the second minority group and indeed made some recommendations to the panel, which uh, they uh, gracefully again uh, accepted and in their final report, as I've already alluded to, uh, made similar uh, recommendations to this council to approve. So the actual recommendations that I'm asking the council to approve today are contained within pages 59 and 60 of your bundles. They are self-explanatory, uh, Chairman. I won't go into any further detail, but I'm more than happy to take any questions. So Thank I formally move the motion. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Barnfather. I call upon Councillor Kate Pohl to second the motion. I second the motion and reserve the right to speak. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Any members wish to speak on the matter? No one's indicated. <clears throat> you have the right to speak as you reserve your right. Do you wish to speak, Councillor Pohl? I, I just just had to say one thing, which I, I certainly I argue very strongly, as, as, as Councillor Barfond said, it was a very, very robust experience, that one was. But in particular, just to draw your attention to paragraph 19, the, the panel continues, this is, in the, this is in the report itself, in the yellow pages, the panel continues to believe that if democracy is to be served and the real equality of opportunity for involvement to exist, it is essential to provide a fair return to councillors to recognise the service they give 
And I think that's a, that was a really important principle. <laughs> Can you not hear me, Royal? <laughs> I think that's a really important principle. I'm really glad that paragraph, that, that statement's in this report because I think it's I think it's a really important one. Just thank you. Thank you, Councillor Paul. Too late, isn't she? Pauline, pass that on. Right. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Right. In the chamber, I think I've allowed two seconds for people to get back. Uh, can we put the motion uh, to the vote then, please? All in favour? Well, that's definitely carried. Move on to agenda item nine. And I call upon Councillor Philip Owen to move the recommendations in the Governance and Ethics Committee annual report. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I'm pleased to move this report, which is the third annual report to the full Council on the work of the Governance and Ethics Committee. The appendix sets out a summary of all the business covered in the last year and members will see that despite the challenge of the pandemic last year, the committee was active across the full scope of its remit. The report picks out a few areas of particular focus. The committee gave strong attention to the assurance it received on the effectiveness of the council's control framework, and it continued to play its part in driving through opportunities to improve where those had been identified. It also continued to pursue its stance of being open and transparent about the strengths and weaknesses of the council and its governance arrangements. The annual report, of course, is helpful this year uh, because we have a new committee and many new members on that committee. And the activities, or some of the proposed activities for this coming year are set out and it's a blend of core duties and planned programme of expenditure reviews. I did, uh, Mr Chairman, as you know, point out to my group yesterday that anything in this report that members are dissatisfied with is the responsibility of Councillor Lawton, because it is a report for 2020 and 21. Anything that you are happy with is almost certainly down to Councillor Moxon and myself's recent intervention. So with those few words of introduction, uh, I am happy to move the report, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Councillor Bruce Lawton to second the motion. Thank you very much, Councillor Owen. I formally rise to second the motion. Um, while I'm standing on my feet, I'd just like to thank, on my record, my thanks to Marge, Nigel uh, and Rob, particularly for all the hard work they put in over the last four years. And I can see Kate she, uh, in, nodding her head. They worked extremely hard on what was a new committee put in place um, before it was just the the, uh, the the accounts committee, and we had a larger remit as far as this is concerned. And I'm sure that I am passing it on to a very capable pair of hands <laughs> to carry out the, the continue the good work that was done over the last four years. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> anybody uh, anybody wish to speak on the motion? No. Can I uh, remind members who are not in the chamber that we're about to move to the vote? And if you wish to vote, could you please rejoin us? Okay. Okay. Yep. Can I put the uh, motion to the vote then, please? All in favour? That's clearly carried. Agenda item 10, a county day for Nottinghamshire, Nottinghamshire Day. I call upon the leader, Councillor Ben Bradley, MP, to move the recommendations in the report.
Thank you, Chair. Uh, my pleasure. And uh, can I start? I hope you'll indulge me, Chairman, by um, welcoming everybody back to the Chamber. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back to some level uh, of normality. But I just wanted to thank the officers and the leadership groups from all of the uh, groups within the Council for their work and their um, willingness to be uh, open and to discuss the arrangements for today and make sure we get this right. I appreciate it's not uh, perfect for everybody and anybody and people have very different views and experiences on uh, the last year and, and the risks and, and the management of those. But hopefully we've managed to find some balance today in terms of the options and opportunities available for members uh, and to uh, do the best we can for the most uh, number. Uh, and hopefully today uh, I'm sure will go as a success. So thank you to everybody who has been involved in those arrangements. In terms of the report, um, it is a pleasure to introduce, I hope it's easy for us to approve uh, today, both an opportunity to celebrate all that is good about our county, uh, but uh, in a practical sense, a good exercise in marketing, in tourism, in delivery of a joined up place or tourism strategy, uh, which I hope can be a priority, uh, one of the key themes that we'll work on with colleagues around the various councils around the county and city over the coming months. The Secretary of State for Local Government, Robert Jenrick, who of course himself is an Nottingham MP, along with Sir John Peace, were the first to raise the fact that many other counties have a celebratory day where they raise and promote their history, their assets, uh, and we have plenty of those chairmen to promote. Uh, so it's quite right to suggest we should also have a day of our own. We should fly the flag for our county. Uh, after consultation with local authorities uh, and with the Lord Lieutenant of Nottinghamshire, uh, the 25th of August was chosen, which I know all members will be aware, uh, was the day that Charles I raised the Royal Standard and started the Civil War in at 1642. Uh, wasn't that the 22nd, Mr Chairman, I hear you ask? No. Um, I know you know your history, but um, I, I don't think you might have, he was there. I didn't say that, Chairman, um, for, for the record. Um, he didn't manage it on the 22nd. He had to threaten to burn down most of Nottingham, I think, in order to get it over the line uh, on the 25th. Uh, and then, of course, it was three years later in Newark uh, where the war ended. So already a rich and major role in our country's history and some great castles uh, to talk about. Uh, as well. I'd welcome views from members on uh, what those key assets are uh, that we should be talking about, that we should promote from Nottinghamshire's past or present on our county day. So obviously this year is challenging in terms of practical arrangements uh, for obvious reasons. So the intention is to start with a, a coordinated promotion of our county in the days in the run-up to Nottinghamshire Day with a small ceremony on the 25th uh, to mark this year to get the date in our diaries for future years as we scale it up with more time to plan to something that our county and its residents can be proud of. And as I said, it's both a cultural and economic opportunity to promote the best that we have to offer. I think it's right that we as a council and with our partners in the area should be proud of our unique history, of the stories that we can tell from Robin Hood to the Civil War to the Pilgrim Fathers. And of course, the incredible assets we have now, our beautiful countryside, leisure activities, cultural assets, sporting centres of excellence. Which is excellence. We've got an awful lot going for us. So I'm pleased we've got this chance to talk about all of that on Nottinghamshire Day this year and in future years. Uh, County Hall will also be proudly flying our Nottinghamshire flag uh, alongside the Union flag every day uh, in recognition of that civic pride. <clears throat> and this week coincides also with County Flag Week and the Nottinghamshire flag is flying proudly on Parliament Square uh, as well this week. Uh, I went to have a look at that yesterday. Uh, so as I said, Mr Chairman, I hope all councillors and parties can get behind Nottinghamshire Day, which will be relatively small this year, but which we hope to grow into something that represents an opportunity for our area uh, to sell itself to the world, for want of a better word, an economic opportunity for business uh, and local attractions, as well as a day of celebration. So I'm pleased to put this for, uh, report forward uh, for your approval from the Council today. Thank you, Councillor Bradley. And I call upon Councillor John Cotty to second the motion. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm happy to second the motion and reserve my right to speak, please. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Clark. Neil Clark, you indicated to speak. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, good morning. Uh, and I just wanted to say how much I do welcome this. Uh, it's long overdue uh, because I have in mind, uh, in fact, the words that you uh, made in your opening remarks, that uh, we're fortunate to live in this country and we're also fortunate to live in this county as well. So this proposal gives a good opportunity for communities to gather together to uh, remind each other of their heritage and the way they can live together, hopefully happily, and work and play together as well. So things that we can do for communities to have events that can celebrate that, and I'm very much in favour, and I always like to see flags flying, uh, and I am fully support this. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Councillor Paul. <clears throat> Okay. 
Okay, okay, thank you. Yes, yes, we're happy to support this. It seems like a really good idea. Um, and uh, uh, we think we particularly like the reference to the sense we're celebrating identity, heritage, culture, and local traditions. And I hope that will actually kind of apply to actually our current culture now, and it won't just be historical, which is clearly also important. But there's just a couple of questions, just, 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 just uh, so we know a little bit more about it. How, I know when you mentioned involving members, how are we going to make sure that members are really are at the core of this and actually are out there in the communities helping us promote what's happening in the past and the present and, and being really inclusive about it? Um, and secondly, how, how is it going to be promoted? And finally, there's no money attached to it, is there? I mean, can we really do this without, a fu without any kind of funding? But you know, we're very happy to support it. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Creamer. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Yes, again, in support, and just a, bit, a little bit of clarification, just a couple of points. It does say uh, no money at this moment in time, and as, as Councillor Foles actually said, it, uh, it does seem to be uh, in need of some finance, at least at some time in the future, so that would, a bit of indication would be useful. Also, just a little bit of clarification. On there, it is going to try to bring people in and and promote Nottinghamshire. Absolutely no problem with that at all. But what about the people of Nottinghamshire itself? It's not just the traditions, it's our communities, it's what we're doing. So I would like somewhere in that to see the promotion of the charities, the people, our communities that actually helped. We had an excellent, uh, excellent speech earlier on from Councillor Henshaw about somebody helping on mental health and in gardening. So things like that as well. So it shouldn't just be the old historic, and as Council said, well, the new needs to be in there as well, and the community needs to be there as well. We need to promote the whole of Nottinghamshire, its whole identity, all of the people. And with that, the next question is, Nottingham is in Nottinghamshire. Is there going to be any dual working, any partnership working? Um, how is that going to work? Because when people come to Nottinghamshire, the bit, biggest thing they normally think about, and I'll go to county first, Sherwood Forest. And that links in straight away to Robin Hood. So, how is it? How is it going to work? Are we actually in talks with the city, or is it just going to be purely Nottinghamshire? Whichever way it goes, I will support it. But it probably should be both. Councillor Dobson. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I think it's a superb idea. Um, as uh, it was said, it's long overdue, and I think uh, Neil Clark said that. And it's probably going to be something that would be stimulate the community of, of Nottinghamshire and the city, everybody, uh, because everybody is down and they need to think about something else. My only comment, really, and it's not a criticism through you, Chairman, to the Leader of Council, it's a query. Why are we in such a rush to do it this year? Could we have not agreed to do it and actually get our ducks in a row and our or everything lined up properly and get other people involved and do it, start the actual job next year? Bearing in mind the amount of extra work our staff have had to do over the last 18 months with the pandemic. Now, I'm sure the staff will say, no, we can do it, because that's what our staff do. But I do get concerned that we're piling more effort and more work onto people. By all means, let's do it, but let's do it next year. Formally agree it this year, and then actually, Ben, you can start your get together who you want, who you don't want. And I know you're very inclusive, so you need to speak to your district counterparts. You need to speak to everybody and get everybody up and running. Thank you, Chairman. But it's a brilliant idea. Councillor Pringle. Thank goodness. I think we've all waited for this long enough, haven't we? I think the support of John Pearce um, means that it will be a success, no matter what we think. And I think there'll be a thousand or a myriad of ideas that can come off the floor here today as to what we should and what we shouldn't do. The fact that we're doing something takes every box as far as I'm concerned. We should be proud of what we are. We've talked about the Pilgrim Fathers a million times in this, in this chamber before. This has got to be the start of that recognition. Um, I know Jason's mm -hmm. going to put something forward later on regarding 
the mining industry. I think that should be recognised in here because of its scale. But also, but also the hosiery mills and, and, and the lace industry. You know, let's not forget them. I know we won't. I know we won't. I'll tell my mother how to suck eggs here. Um, but I think one thing that we should do is make this a non-political day where actually we can all sit together and we can have a pint or a cup of tea, I would assume, because most of us will be driving. <laughs> uh, okay, well, but what I would suggest this year, Chairman, just to, to, to bolster your charity, is that as members attend the flag raising on the 25th, that um, the, the, the travel expenses that are, will, will be incurred are donated to you on that day. Thank you, Councillor Pringle. Councillor Sam Smith. Thank you, Chairman. Well, as some members in this chamber may know, I have a history with flags. But this flag is one to be raised, and I wholeheartedly support it. While this flag is flying, I hope that Nottinghamshire tourism and economy booms as we show off what we have to be proud of in Nottinghamshire, particularly Newark Castle. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Cotty, you reserve the right to reply. Oh, sorry, Keith, I didn't uh, didn't see you there. Don't... <coughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm easily missed, Chairman. It's OK. <laughs> <clears throat> thank, you, thank you, Chairman. Chairman, I'm delighted that we are going to have a, a county day. Nottinghamshire has so much to offer and to be grateful for. It is only right that we celebrate that and that we also show our national pride by having the Grand Union flag flying from our buildings. Our history is not there for us to like or dislike. It is there for us to learn from. It is, it is, and if it offends you, more the better, because you're less likely then to repeat that history. By celebrating our, our county and country, we are demonstrating that we will not surrender to the, to the demands of the woke society and the media as an attempt at, at, at um, erasing our national identity and the history by defacing our statues and monuments. We are proud of our heritage, and that's okay, that it's okay to be English. Chairman, clearly there's also an economic benefit to having these days, and I am sure the visitor economy will welcome anything that helps to bring people into our county. I fully support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gurley. Councillor Penny Gowland. Thank you. I'm very proud of being English and the diversity that we find in this nation. But what I wanted to ask, a very simple question, um, would it be possible to arrange to allow residents to have uh, the streets shut, the street parties, to celebrate our diversity? Because uh, I've already had a request for that from one of my neighbourhoods. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gowland. Councillor Andre Camilleri. It's been a, a son of an immigrant and born on Peel Street in Nottingham, home for difficult births, by the way. Uh, and it's carried on, that's carried on. Uh, I'm extremely proud to be from Nottinghamshire. I'm extremely proud to be from Mansfield. Um, we don't really uh, big ourselves up a lot. We put ourselves down. We're always talking about how deprived we are, how, how bad things are. It's been an absolutely wonderful place for me. and my, my parents came here after the war and built a life, and it's fantastic. Uh, the only thing is there's no flag flying over Mansfield Town Hall. Uh, I have had a go at her, but she had a go at me back. Mm. So we need to get that sorted out. But I am extremely proud of what you've done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor John O'Lee. Chairman, thank you very much. I choose to move to Nottingham in 2007 after serving 12 years in the military. I love Nottingham and I'm really proud to live here and raise my young family here. Um, I fully support this and will um, um, help Ben and help the Nottinghamshire County Council however I can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Anyone else? No. Councillor Cotty. Thank you, Chairman. I'll keep it short and sweet. I'm really pleased to second this um, recommendation and I can see that the leader has been pencilling away as the questions were asked. So, as his leader, I'm going to allow him to <laughs> respond to that. Thank you, Chairman. Very de deftly sideswiped there, John. <laughs> Councillor Bradley, to sum up. Thank you, Chairman. I'll uh, thank everybody for those contributions, except Councillor Cotty. Um, no, helpful. Um, thanks for those comments. I think um, some, some good points have come up. 
Um, thank you to everybody who has uh, spoken in them. Uh, fully uh, agree, Keith, about the importance of our history and heritage and learning from that uh, and teaching that and passing that on. And that's part of what this day can be about. Uh, Councillor Fole, uh, how are members involved? Um, uh, obviously, this year, as I've said, challenging in terms of practicalities of delivery. It's going to be mainly online, truthfully, this year in terms of what we can put across. I think that probably answers uh, your question as well, Maureen, in terms of the level of uh, work and input involved for this year, but with a view to them working hard next year to make this uh, a major event. And we will consider those options like uh, you know, street parties and, and what people want to do in their communities, because it's absolutely true that that is uh, hugely important. So as we get through this process, and we hopefully have that opportunity, uh, as I say, probably largely online, this year but to be able to push out and promote those positive messages will then work uh, with more time to look towards next summer uh, and to be able to plan something that is really positive and meaningful um in terms of timing uh, again we're not entirely led uh, ourselves by that it's not our our day as such as a council but obviously a combination of partners uh, including secretary of state including uh, sir john peace uh, lord lieutenant uh, and district councils and everybody's been kind of consulted uh, on these proposals so uh, we will follow that lead and we will do everything that we can to help deliver uh, somebody mentioned working with the city we are absolutely uh, doing that and, and coordinating with the city council um, one of the things we want to do in the future uh, looking towards um, the meeting of economic prosperity committee next week is to look at all of those uh, partners as to how we can better market our place our tourism as a whole county across all of those uh, different partners and organisations to make sure we can put this forward in a really positive and coherent way, not just on Nottingham today, but all the time, to be able to boost those assets. Because it's absolutely true that everything from Bassett Law all the way down Shield Forest uh, to Nottingham Castle is all connected, uh, all has that story that we can tell uh, in a positive and unified way, uh, I hope, going forward. So again, uh, thank you to everybody who has uh, contributed to that debate. Do feed your ideas in, in terms of what we can do next year, what you'd like to see in terms of community engagement, who we should involve how we could push that out as positively as we can and we look forward to working with everybody on it. Thank you, Councillor Bradley. Can I remind members who are not in the chamber that we're about to move to the vote and I would ask them to return if they wish to exercise their right to vote. And we move to the vote then, all in favour? That is clearly carried. Agenda item 11A, questions to the Nottinghamshire and City of Nottingham Fire Authority. There are none. We move on then to uh, agenda item 11B, questions to committee chairman. As set out in the constitution, a maximum of 60 minutes is allowed for questions to committee chairman, after which any remaining questions will receive a written response. I would like to remind members that following the change in the constitution, there will be only one supplementary question which must be from the member who asked the original question. The supplementary question should be on the same matter and should be in the form of a question and not a statement. There will be no adjournment debates. There are 18 questions as follows. Questions one and two will be taken together as they are on the same item. And I call upon uh, Councillor Martin and Councillor Taylor to put their questions to the chairman of the relevant committee. Bailey, is it? Sorry, it's not on my not on my notes. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I say thank you very much for coming to Ashfield's flag raising day. With the dissolving of the Communities and Place and Development and Review Committee, which uh, excellently scrutinised this council's methodologies uh, and processes for highways improvements and maintenance, will the chairman of the new Transport Committee provide this council with the assurance that the newly formed cross-party highways review panel will fully explore the latest and most economically currently available methods available to repair Nottinghamshire's broken roads and also actually include pavements? Thank you. Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, would the Chairman of the Transport and Environment uh, Committee update members' progress so far regarding the Highway Review Panel? Thank you. I call upon Councillor Neil Clark to reply, and I remind the question putters that they do each have a supplementary. 
Thank you, Chairman. That's uh, one thing I was just about to ask you to clarify. So uh, that's the that's the first hurdle over. Uh, so I think uh, maybe it goes without saying just to remind all uh, members of the council here that uh, road safety and the highways uh, review particularly is one of our top priorities for this uh, new administration. Uh, the roads maintenance uh, is uh, was mentioned by the majority of people on the doorstep uh, during the elections. And just to remind you, the reason that this item now is coming to us and we have this highways review panel is because that was one of the first motions in the first meeting of this council to set up this uh, review. So I think that does give a measure of the importance of this. So we have hit the ground running. We've already had the first meeting of the review panel. And at this stage, it is more of fact finding and information gathering. But then we will gradually move into seeing what actions can actually be taken. So in the first meeting, we have agreed the terms of reference. Uh, we've also agreed that we will be having an outside consultancy, uh, WSP, uh, who will be assisting us. Uh, we have asked the uh, Local Government Association, in brackets LGA, uh, to help us with a peer review. So that will be a critical friend helping us uh, constructively uh, to look, at, look in the mirror at how we perform. Uh, we will also uh, be arranging to meet other county councils as well to assess and compare how they do things and compare to us. So tomorrow, early morning, Mr Chairman, uh, we start this second visit, which is actually, or well, second meeting, which is actually a visit which will be combined with a depot visit and a meeting uh, to Billsthorpe Depot, uh, to Vyas uh, Main Depot, where we will be looking exactly at what the questions have been saying is how do they do things now and how can they possibly be done better or improved or looking and exploring latest technology, innovation, different ways of working. Uh, so I think that is specific to Councillor Martin's uh, question. Uh, we are working on the basis that all options are open at the moment because we want this to be a thorough and comprehensive review. So we want to explore whatever questions uh, we have which is possible because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that the way that we maintain the roads is the most effective way. And that's what we will be exploring. And I wanna make absolutely clear that pavements are included, Mr. Chairman. So I don't think we need to have any further questions as things go on with regard to that, because the word highways actually refers to both the carriageway and the footpaths. So it's a combined term. Highways means the bits that you drive on or cycle on and the bits that you walk on. So it is all inclusive term. And I did want, it's a shame he's not in the chamber, maybe he's, uh, maybe he's listening in the background. Uh, Councillor Zadrosny mentioned uh, utilities. And I just wanted to confirm that's one of the things as well, which I want to see looked at. And in fact, I'm very familiar with that Heineken advert that he mentioned, because I've used that myself in past presentations. Um, a very, for those of you who haven't seen it, I suggest you look at it because the punchline is um, uh, is different, shall we say, or rather interesting. So I will leave you to to look at that. But it does work on the basis and emphasise the need to ensure that uh, where possible, we encourage utilities uh, to work together to minimise the disruption. So, uh, Chairman, the very much. Uh, the work is ongoing and in progress. Uh, we're already uh, getting dates in the diary for September and October for future meetings because we want to be 
coming to conclusions and recommendations that we can put to policy committee later on in the year. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Councillor Martin, do you have a supplementary? Remind you, it's on the same subject and it must be a question. I do, Chair. Thank you. Um, well, I welcome the fact that this will be a, a thorough and robust review, because if I spoke to residents in my division, they wouldn't think payment were included. But Councillor that Martin, aside, question, will this administration, with the assistance of the newly formed panel, agree to review the inequitable redistribution of the provisional highways and capital maintenance programme and abandon the predetermined geographical formulas of the past that, in, in, that the government insists on? Uh, thank you, Chairman. I am certainly not going to prejudge any of the conclusions of the review panel, otherwise that would make it a little bit uh, pointless. What I can say is that already in the terms of reference, there is reference to financing of the highways maintenance. So basically, the, the answer to the first question relating to principle is that financing will be looked at but obviously, as I say, I'm not going to prejudge any conclusions. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Bailey, do you have a supplementary? I do. Thank you, Chair, Mr Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor Clark, for your reply. Uh, the Council agreed the Highways Review Panel will be transparent cross-party initiative. Uh, could the Chairman explain what measures have been taken to ensure everyone can feed their views and evidence into the process? Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Somebody got a... I'm assuming you're asking me to speak, uh, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. <laughs> it's all right. There was, a, there was another light on, I think. To... Uh, right. Uh, so, uh, in answer to that, uh, yes, first of all, all groups are represented on the review panel, uh, including a non aligned uh, member. So, first of all, I hope that demonstrates the all inclusiveness of the actual review. But also, and I hope that uh, members will now have uh, received the email, uh, but if they haven't, then uh, please look for it, uh, because all members have been emailed to ask in a call for evidence to um, give us their observations, and most importantly for me, the sorts of questions that they would like to see asked, because Nobody has a monopoly on good ideas and remembering everything. So I think it's good to have a good comprehensive view of all the questions that need asking, because this is a great opportunity. It is a comprehensive review. So let's make sure we are asking all the questions. So every member is involved on the council because they will all have that opportunity to feed into this review. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Councillor John Wilmot uh, concerning the Hucknall Library. Oops. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, the roof of uh, at Hucknall Library was repaired uh, some time ago and at uh, considerable cost. Uh, I think it was seven hundred thousand pounds for the uh, whole work that was done on on the uh, on the whole of the area. Um, so, uh, just months later, it was being repaired again. Uh, can the chairman of the committee inform me of the cost of the initial work, if I am correct, the subsequent work, and whether the council is out of pocket as a result? Thank you, Councillor Cuffey. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor Wilmot, for your question. Um, Hucknall Library is a Grade 2 listed building, and the roof was replaced in 2016 at a cost of £300,000 and is expected to last a minimum of 30 years. Recent work on the building has concentrated on repairing internal ceilings, not the roof, rather than the, uh, that roof structure, and has cost £50,000. Whilst these costs are substantial, they're essential to maintain a Grade 2 listed building and falls in line with the Council's budget as owners of the site. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cutty. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor Wilmot? Yes, just to say, Chair Chairman, that uh, I just wondered why this uh, uh, issue wasn't uh, looked at earlier 
and, and, and why did why did it actually happen the, the indoor situation surely it should have been all looked at uh, initially when the repair on the outside was uh, done so it, why wasn't the inside of the uh, ceiling looked at at the same time as the, the outside of, of the roofing? Thank you. Councillor Cotty. Quite simply because the roof wanted sorting out and it was inspected. You say in your question it was repaired some time ago and that was 2016. And then in the next sentence, just months later, being repaired again. Well, that's not true. 2016, the roof was replaced and repaired. The uh, internal ceilings aren't part of the roof. And so they weren't inspected at the time. And it wasn't until a flood, I believe, on the building that we were aware there was a problem with it, within the roof, within the internal structure. So that's why. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Councillor Cotty. Councillor Penny Gowland on pesticides. Thank you. Over the past month, I've been contacted by many upset residents who've witnessed what they describe as an excessive use of weed killer containing the herbicide glyphosate. Further investigation revealed this is being used on planters and areas which the residents are encouraging as corridors for pollinators. Could the chair instigate a review of Nottingham County Council's weed killing programme to try to minimise the use of the weed killers uh, generally and to cease use of glyphosate in particular? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gowland. Councillor Neil Clark to reply. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, I would like to ask my Vice Chairman for Environmental Matters, uh, Councillor Mike Adams, to respond on my behalf. Thank you. Councillor Adams. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Clark. And thank you, uh, Councillor Gowland, uh, for your question. Uh, here at Nottinghamshire County Council, we only use weed killer on curbs, footways, cycleways, hardened verges and central reserves. This is done to enhance the visual appearance. I'm sure you've all had reports fairly recently with the weather, how we've had a big uplift in the, in the volume of, of weed growth. Um, it's fundamental that we do this because it can cause structural damage uh, to the fabric of the highway. Now, <clears throat> the authority would normally use weed killer on verges, planters or any other areas on soft landscaping. Uh, we, wouldn't <clears throat> excuse me, we would not normally use weed killer on those. Um, and I'll be grateful if Councillor Garland could let me know of the specific locations to which um, she has been alerted uh, so that the officers can investigate further. Um, glyphosate, uh, which is, in case people don't know, is the main ingredient in Roundup brand herbicides. Uh, it's currently the only approved non-residual weed killer for use on highway surfaces. It's been licensed by both the UK government and the EU and is considered safe when used according to the manufacturer's instructions. However, the authority does recognise members' concerns regarding the product and its continued use. Consequently, our ongoing highways review will examine the alternatives uh, that are available. We all understand the importance uh, of the highways to encourage and promote wildlife. Its rural grass cuttings frequencies are already amongst the lowest in the region and its notified road verge scheme, uh, which has been in abeyance for a number of years, was recently reintroduced. NRVs receive a single meadow grass cut in September and clippings are collected and disposed of off-site. The best practice guide managing grassland road verges produced by Plant Life recognises that this technique is one of the most effective for promoting wildflowers and providing corridors for pollinators. So I'm incredibly excited to tell you that the NRV scheme is being extended um, and work with Nottinghamshire Wildlife Trust and collaborating with them uh, goes on and we look to uh, introduce some more in the future. Uh, I'm also currently working on a plan to see how much further and extended work we can actually do with Knott's Wildlife, as, uh, as we all know that biodiversity uh, is important for us all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor yeah. Gowland? First of all, thank you for the positive aspects of that reply. Um, would it be possible for members to be informed in advance of local weed spraying schedules so that we can uh, involve residents when they want to prepare for this and uh, take action locally themselves if they wish. Thank you, uh, Councillor Gowland. I'm afraid that isn't um, possible. There's an issue around the fact that with, with the weed, eat, uh, the weed killing, it has to be done during periods of calm weather. Um, if, if it's sprayed during the actual rain, it can obviously be dispersed and therefore rendered useless. Um, so unfortunately, although, you know, if you, if you sort of... Um, plan around to think when the when we have weed grows, then the plans begin and then it's as quick as obviously as possible to get around all the areas in Nottinghamshire. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adams. 
Councillor Hollis, concerning house for look after children. Thank you. My question to the chairman of the finance committee. Uh, the house prices in Sudbury Drive, Huffway, are three times the average house price in Sutton in Ashfield. Despite this, the council have purchased a house there. The property is one of the most expensive in the town and has been bought to house just two looked after children at a time. The council have bought this house without, without planning permission for its intended use. Does the chair believe taxpayers got good value for money purchasing a house on Sudbury Drive, Huthway, without consultation with the divisional member? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Hollis. Councillor Richard Jackson to reply. Um, well, thank you, Chairman. Um, and thank Councillor Hollis for his question. High quality accommodation for looked after children who this council and all of us as elected members are corporate parents mm. is one of our highest priorities. For the majority of children in the care of this council, keeping them close to their school, their friends and their community is extremely important. There are vulnerable children from Ashfield, as well as from the other six districts in the county, whose best interest will be, ach will be achieved uh, sorry, whose best interest will be served by achieving this aim, and we are continually looking for opportunities to improve our capacity to do so. I found Councillor Hollis's question a little surprising, to say the least. It seems to be preoccupied with the relative cost of this purchase, rather than the benefit an additional children's home will bring to our looked-after children if planning permission is granted. I recall the days when Conservatives here were falsely accused of knowing the cost of everything and the value of nothing. Yet in this case, Councillor Hollis seems to be far more preoccupied with the cost of the house in question, rather than the value that the additional local specialist accommodation could provide to our most vulnerable of children. Nevertheless, I seek to address his concerns. When we need to expand our residential estate, a property search is undertaken within the geographical areas identified to find properties that meet or that can be adapted to meet the need uh, of our required specification. The average price for an average size detached house in Huthway is currently £201,000 according to Rightmove. The detached above average size four bedroom property that we purchased on the 12th of July in Sudbury Drive was the only one in the area that met the specification that we need. And rather than the £300,000 that Councillor Hollis referred to in his three minute speech at the beginning of today's session, it cost us £265,000. The property was purchased in advance of planning application being considered because anyone operating in the open housing market must act with speed to secure a purchase when their desired property becomes available. Planning processes take considerable time and vendors cannot realistically be expected to wait for a prospective purchaser <clears throat> to obtain planning consent. In fact, it would be a waste of public money to pursue a lengthy planning application and hopefully gain approval for target property, only to find that the property had since been sold. There'll be nothing done to the property in terms of establishing it as a children's home, unless and until planning consent has been granted for this. Now, I am aware that some local residents have witnessed activity taking place at the location, but I can clarify that these visitors were staff from ARC conducting routine assessments on behalf of the council in line with our vacant property management regime. The local member has had dialogue with a number of officers across the council about the purchase of this property and made his concerns clear, all of which have been fully considered. He's also been invited to visit a children's home being run by the proposed provider to better understand how some of his concerns would be addressed should planning permission be granted. Now, as members are aware, all planning applications are required to follow a due legal process where the proposed use of a property is subject to rigorous and impartial examination carried out by the Planning and Rights of Way Committee. If the proposed use of the property as a children's home does not pass these tests, then the council will either have to identify another use for the property or resell it in what remains an active and open market where it is highly unlikely to lose any value. I'm clear that the council has followed the correct processes and that our proposals for the property's future use will be examined and determined in the proper way. Any interested party with concerns about our proposals will have full opportunity to, to submit their evidence through the usual planning process. Chairman, I read, readily admit that nothing is more important to this administration than providing our looked after children with the most appropriate and suitable accommodation. I'm sure I speak for the Chairman of the Children and Young People's Committee just as much for myself 
and all of my colleagues on this side in saying that we would not purchase a property or propose its use as a children's home unless we were confident that this would provide huge benefit to the children concerned, that we could deliver the service at best value and that it would not have a detrimental impact on those living in the vicinity. It is a compliment to the area that we have in, uh, identified this property and this location as the most safe and suitable environment to locate such an important facility. Our judgment will now be tested through the planning process in a fair and impartial way. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Councillor Hollis, do you have a supplementary question? I do, Mr Chairman. I'll challenge the uh, fair and due process of the planning, bearing in mind they've taken it out of Ashfield's plans and put it into their own. But my simple question is, regarding the value for money, and that's the whole reason I've asked this question. Councillor Jackson claims that I'm preoccupied by the money, not the children we're looking after. I'd say to Councillor Jackson, if we don't spend the money wisely, we're not going to be looking after these as many children. Does he think it's an appropriate use of money to buy one of the most expensive homes, which he hasn't answered yet, in my division? Or, and does, it, does he, in future, intend to consult with all local members? That's two questions, Councillor Hollis. You're yeah. allowed one. Does he intend to consult you... with local members before it's too late, as this case was? I only found out when the planning application was put in and the purchase was already nearly a done deal. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. That isn't my information about when the local member was kept uh, was informed of the plans for this property. Um, I, I, I hope Councillor Hollis wasn't questioning the integrity of the planning committee here and Councillor Butler, I'm sure, won't stand for anything other than a proper hearing when this comes before his committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just find it incredibly disappointing, Mr Chairman, that we can't celebrate the fact that we're providing high quality uh, accommodation for some of the most vulnerable children who've had a terrible yeah, start yeah. in life, who, yeah, deserve the very, hard, who, who deserve the very best from us. I'm proud that we've paid above yeah, yeah. the average market price, uh, if that's what we're being accused of doing, to get an above average property to look after these children in an above average way. We don't aspire to averageness in any way. Uh, I wouldn't want to buy houses on the, uh, the least expensive streets, as we're being advised to do by the uh, independent group opposite. And as long as we've got anything to do with it, that isn't what we're going to do, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. I will take one more question from Councillor Wilmot about Titchfield Street, and then we will break for lunch. Councillor Wilmot. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Could the Chairman of the Transport and Environment uh, answer why the Titchfield Street open space is so unkept? Two years ago, this Council announced that it was going to be turned into a car park. Could he provide an update on this? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilmot. Councillor Clark. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Chairman. Well, yeah, th I mean, the question talks about uh, why a street, Fitchfield Street, is so unkempt. And how do you judge, how do you define unkempt? Uh, I'm sure that we can all uh, use different phrases and different adjectives uh, to describe how a street is unkempt. Is it the state of the road surface? Is it, is it litter? Is it uh, even sort of households? You know, what does he mean by the street being unkempt? Um, so I note that, that the question is about the street initially, but I also note that a car park is mentioned. So perhaps if I just deal with the car park issue and then I'm going to return uh, back to the, the street issue uh, in, in a little while. So, in terms of um, the car park that was mentioned, and this is part of our assets, um, not least uh, looked after by the gentleman uh, on my left-hand side. Uh, as part of our continuing review of property assets, the County Council did examine the potential for using the Titchfield Street site in Hucknall as a car park. That work has led to other options being identified by the property service based on constructive engagement with the chairman of adult social care and health committee and the children and the young people's committee lots of committees involved here mr chairman so it's obviously very comprehensive uh, but under my chairmanship officers have been directed to work through these options to identify the most suitable use for the site and this will be reported to councillor girling's um, 
in Economic Development and Asset Management Committee in due course. With regard to the site's current condition, uh, I will, have a, however, ask officers to ensure that it is regularly inspected and kept in a clean and safe state uh, whilst the work is going on. Uh, so, in terms of the condition of the street, uh, Mr Chairman, of Titchfield Street, I actually happen to know this street extremely well. Uh, I ask, uh, why do I know that, I ask, uh, I hear you ask, uh, Mr you Chairman. Uh, well, thank you for... Uh, I know Titchfield Street extremely well because I was there only three or four weeks ago delivering leaflets to lots of the households. Uh, and in fact, I know every letterbox, Mr Chairman. Never mind about the street, uh, despite my bad hip, but I'm grateful for having uh, terrace streets. Uh, it wasn't just Titchfield Street, it was Cooperative Avenue, and I think it was Parker Avenue, and there was a couple of other streets, the names of which I cannot remember. But I, I remember noticing in what good condition Titchfield Street was. Uh, it is divided into two sections, and the, the bit with the car park is on the other side of the, the new uh, link road. Uh, but even so, uh, I am amazed that in actual fact the road surface and the pavements are in very, very good condition. I did actually encounter one or two of the uh, the residents. Uh, and, in, and in fact, uh, I, I chatted one and I, I tried to hand this leaflet to uh, him, Mr Chairman, and he said, oh, I don't want any of that. I'm not interested. I don't, I have nothing to do with the local councillors. So uh, I just wonder who it is that they're referring to, Mr Chairman. But uh, I, it's amazing how I should have chosen a particular street for which I have uh, uh, got myself very well acquainted with. Thank you, Mr Chairman. <laughs> Councillor Wilmot, do you have a supplementary? I certainly do, Chair. Thank you. Um, it was the open space land that, uh, on Titchfield Street that we're, we're talking about. And it is owned by Nottinghamshire County Council, and it is a complete and utter eyesore. Question, please, Councillor Wilmot. And the question, the question is to the chairman, can you give me assurance that this open space will be attended to and that it will be turned into a car park, which you, which the your party put 115k into it to, to, for, for this to take place? Will you categorically tell me that this car park will take place for the residents of Hucknall? Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Well, uh, he, he actually uh, didn't mention uh, the uh, particular site uh, in his original question, but that's why I uh, assumed that when um, he was talking about car park that uh, he must be referring to this site. Uh, and to be honest, Chairman, I actually answered that uh, supplementary question because I did actually state that I'll be asking the officers to look at the state of that site and ensure that it is kept in a safe manner. In terms of uh, prejudging what it may or may not be used for, uh, that is a matter which I also stated in my answer uh, will be referred to Councillor Girling's uh, committee. So I will um, allow Councillor Girling to give it due consideration in the fullness of time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clark. It is just past 12.30, so could we return at 1.35?